the time having arrived, um, I will call to order the meeting of the Room Tax Commission. Um, first item on the agenda is the election of chairperson and vice chairperson to the Room Tax Commission. So um, I will accept any nominations. Uh, Alder Rasmussen. Thank you. I'll nominate uh, Michael Martins to chair the committee. Does Alder Martins accept? Accept. All right. Are there any other nominations for chair? Are there any other nominations for chair? And I'll ask one more time, are there any other nominations for chair? All right. Um, if I will then accept a motion to close nominations. Make so moved. Motion. Oh. A motion by Rasmussen, second by Vandiat. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Alder Martins, you are chair. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. you want to come up? Yeah. And then we'll still need vice chair. We need a vice chair. Kind of the running all, okay. all right. Uh, at this point, we will need um, to elect a vice chair uh, for the uh, commission. Do I have any nominations for a vice chair? Don't all stand up at once. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Chad? Uh, I'll nominate Tim. Tim, do you accept? I will. Okay, a second. I'll second that. All right. Um, we got a uh, nomination as uh, made and seconded for Tim Vondiak to be the vice chair. Do we have any other nominations for vice chair? Any other nominations for vice chair? Not. Hearing anything, we'll close uh, nominations. Uh, any discussion? Okay, we'll take a vote. Uh, all those in favor of Tim Vandiak to be the vice chair, say aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Uh, Tim, you're the vice chair. Thank you. Okay. Uh, moving on to item number two, minutes of the previous meeting on November 11th, 2023. It should be in your packet. Any uh, corrections or uh, discussion on that? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a uh, motion. Okay, a uh, motion from Lindsay. Uh, I think there was a, oh, a second. second from Chad. All right, uh, any discussion? Not hearing anything, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries. Item number three, discussion and possible action regarding tourism grant request applications. And in our packet, we've got a quite a list. And um, I think it's, uh, we can either work, do these all at once or we can do them uh, a piece of it at a time. I think it's probably best, we might be best on these individual applications because they're so unique to kind of go over them individually so the sure. body is okay with that yep okay we'll start with the uh the first one the uh balloon festival so. and they are requesting i think it's uh ten thousand dollars for i have a question on that rep. one yeah uh go ahead so Alder do we have a rep here from balloon festival oh yeah, could you come up uh, so um the the event has been long standing and obviously it's a fan favorite so um, I guess the only question I could have is that when the event, there was some question as to whether the event would continue or cease. Um, there was some, I would say, quite public tensions between um, the Taste and Glow Board and the Wallers. Are we confident that that event can continue and thrive it, it, as it was in the past or even, even in a different way? I have heard that there is motivation to start a competing festival and take the pilots. So can this event like come to fruition and, and succeed? Has some of that been calmed or what's happening there? Sure. Um, 
to answer your question is uh, the Woolers have decided and they did contact all the pilots and they're doing a pop-up event that same weekend in Wapaka. What that is is just pilots come, they don't tell anybody in the public. If they're able to take flight, they go ahead and they do so and you see the beautiful balloons in the air. Um, it's more of a good time for the pilots to reconnect and have a good time and spend the weekend together. Um, we are trying our best to move it forward because it is a community event and that's what was explained to the Woolers that it's not their event, it's not my event, um, it's not anyone's event, it's a community event and it's been here for 21 years and we want to continue that legacy and tradition. Uh, what happened with the Woolers, we didn't attend that to happen. Um, they tried taking the event to another destination. Uh, they reached out to La Crosse and uh, Wisconsin Dells and Plover, and then they were in final communication with Marshfield, and Marshfield did want to move forward and do the event, and that's when the board stepped in and said, you don't have that, that authority or that ability to move it. Um, and so that's where the conflict started. Um, so currently right now we're trying our best to move it forward. Uh, 2024 will look a little bit different. Um, in the past, you know, like last year we had 42 balloons. Uh, that's too many in my opinion and the board agrees with that just for safety reasons. So we were gonna scale it back anyways. Um, but for 2024, our goal is to have 20 to 25. We have about 10 confirmed right now. Um, and it might just be at 10. But we're bringing different aspects of different things, the unique things that haven't been done yet. Um, so that we can entice people to come and experience it and still enjoy it with limited balloons. Um, but going forward for the future years, that's our intent is to have the balloons be a, a part of it. I guess just as a follow up, is it possible to um, secure different pilots, I guess. I mean, there's balloonists all over the country that take Correct. part in events year Correct. round everywhere. You know, and I get that there's some measure of loyalty between them. They are kind of a close knit community, but you know, when there's an opportunity, you know, to s attend an event of some size and popularity with, you know, now what we see is a committed audience. Like, you know, I guess I'm, I'm concerned about, it, it's kind of like starting over. You know, and so you go from a situation where you have actually too much to see. Now, do we have enough to fill three days or whatever it's going to be? And then, you know, do we bring in the size crowd that's been there and then they're underwhelmed and don't come back? So, you know, I guess that's that's what I would like to see. I mean, we obviously don't want to lose the event in the area, but I'm also concerned about like trying to rebuild on the fly and still be successful. So, yep. Yep, those are our concerns as well. And that's the balloons that are coming, they mm -hmm. are ones that have never been here before. So there'll be different balloons. Okay. Um, so we are reaching out further and a lot of these balloonists are coming from mm -hmm. miles away to attend our event. Um, I think the pilots that have been here in the past, they just don't wanna get in, in the, the mix. Mm -hmm. So they wanna take this year off, which I can completely be on their same page as that, I probably would be doing the same. Right. And so I think that next year we wouldn't have as many conflicts and we'll be able to get back to where we are. Um, but like I said, we're trying to bring the different events so that, or the different activities to the festival so that it still gives people a reason to come and want to experience. Sure. So. Okay, thank you for that. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, any other questions? I know, um, Alderman Rasmussen, you bring up a, a very important point, you know, that, or the, you know, that also that, that this is a rebuilding year, and that might, that might be an effective, you know, a good reason why these, um, these room tax monies would be in an effective use in order to help with the marketing of this event to, to, so we can, you know, cement that we'll, you know, ascertain, you know, we will get people at the event so that they will know about it, so. I just, I, I have one Go question. Um, the 2023 profit and loss by tag group, it says advertising and marketing $1,400. Is there a different line item under that one or what happened to all the money? Um, well, the for the room tax dollars, we use that for the gem grant. That, that solely went towards that. So that one is, I do believe, is just separate what we paid out of our own budget for advertising. Where would it be under expenses, I guess, is just what I'm asking besides advertising and marketing 
from 2022 or 2023? Uh, three. Okay. Um, like, I, you know, I, to be completely honest with you, Nancy took care of all of the financial part of, of putting the budget together. Um, but like I said, it's just we, last year and the year before, we did have the GEM grant and all the full funds went towards that. And we submitted the, the paperwork for the documentation. So I'm only reflecting on that as the 1400 being what be we took out of our. Maybe. It might yeah. be uncategorized. Can I follow up on the GEM grant situation. So that GEM grant refers to local match funds that were required to get the grant. Is that what I mean? Yep. So we applied for two years. I've, our event qualified for two years. Um, so the first year was 75% that the state covered, and we had to cover 25. Mm -hmm. Then you can apply for that second consecutive year, and then it's a 50 50 match. So and so with that, um, I recall that we had some tense discussion with Nancy when she was here last year about that. Mm -hmm. And I think we were very clear that um, the local room tax dollars had to go towards marketing and outreach and that we did not want them used for overhead or matching funds. Correct. Um, specifically because the room tax rules are specific. And she was rather standoffish with us in saying other communities have given us money and they don't care how we use it. Right. And we said, well, this is, this is the rules. So... You know, I, I have concerns um, that we were very clear about the use of the funds, mm -hmm. and if they didn't truly go to that advertising and outreach piece, um, you know, it, maybe it's good that we're starting over because we need maybe some different faces in that mix, but clearly our instructions were not followed with last year's money. No, you know, they, I, they, was, they were, because it was it went towards the GEM grant, and the GEM grant was outside of the 90-mile markets. So okay. we went out to Chicago, we went, went to Minneapolis, we went to Milwaukee. We had five different markets that we ran OTT commercials in, Okay, and that had a match of it. It had an $80,000 campaign. Okay. The state only paid thirty nine five fifty, dollars and okay. we had to come up with the rest, and that's okay. where the room tax okay. dollars went. All right. That, thank you for clearing that up, because that was starting to be concerning. So... Yeah. Okay. Any other discussion? It's. I think it's tied to that. Um, who? Where did post event? Where does that get submitted for checks and balance to validate that the money that was awarded went to what it was supposed to? They come to our office. Okay. So and we and I think to the to this point the commission is just I, that was my understanding to you on the finance side or mm -hmm. city side. So if there was to be a flag, you would you would throw that for our review and consideration as well. Yeah, one would hope so. Yeah. Okay, and then the second piece of that, and it's not um, would be, is there an opportunity when we award funds like this that if an event if it's event based, if it were to move within twelve months, twenty four months after award that a portion or all of that would have to be paid back. Mm -hmm. So there is a clawback? Well, there is not one now. You could okay. create that. I don't know how feasible it would actually be to recover those funds, but you know, you could definitely have that as a you know, qualification of the grant. Right. I think that is something that maybe we should look like look at as a safeguard going forward, but I think we have to define um, what the verification process is and make it something that we can quantify and then like there has to be a like a review mechanism like that's reliable. So maybe maybe not in this cycle because if it's something we have to build, we probably have to build it for the future, but I think it's important to have at least some measure of accountability tied to those grants, especially if they're at the maximum fund level. Because we've taken the cap off now, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, if we're going to give a whole, whole lot more, even, there, there needs to be just a different level of, like, reporting, I think, or, or accountability. Agreed. Yeah, I would agree, too. I'll make some notes on that, that maybe we can, maybe that can be a future agenda item, you know, for, for next year of application yeah. process. Yeah. So, for something in the future when we want to. When we, well, maybe this fall, when we want to review our applications, we can or the, our process, we can add something like that in. So, okay. Uh, and for yeah, full disclosure, if the event does not go on, the money, any money that we would get in grants would go back to where it needs to go. And I, I'll personally make sure that that happens. Okay. Yeah, because I think with some with some entities, you would give them the money goes up front, and then others, I, I believe, they submit receipts for reimbursements. So. 
Okay. So anything else? Well, if there's no other questions, I'll entertain a motion. Thank you. I, it appears that we have the um, funds to fund the requests as submitted. Um, and it, it looks like the documentation is good as far as the um, goals of these particular events. A lot of them are events that we've funded in the past. Um, so without um, draining all of the funds that we have left for allocation, I think we would be able to accommodate all of these requests. Yes. And that um, in estimating the room tax revenue um, last year, we took in about a million fifty thousand. Uh, first quarter this year has been tough. We're down like 30 percent due to you know the lack of winter, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, I took a more conservative approach in the uh, estimation of income. Okay. So I would move then that we fund all of these requests as requested. Then all of the requests, or or just the. Or did you want to take them all? You want? Do you want to take them one at a time? I think we're gonna. I'm I think, sorry. I, yeah, because I yeah. think there's a couple of them here. I wanna. I wanna discuss. Oh, certainly. So, okay. So. so then, let me first then make a motion that we um, grant the request from Balloon Fest, um, with the understanding that we know that there is some rebuilding happening there. I'll second that. Okay. Motions have been made and second to um, approve the request for the Balloon Festival. Uh, any discussion? Not hearing anything. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Thank all you. Right. Uh, thank you. And uh, next up is the Center for Visual Arts. Uh, it's a new exhibit a, uh, among um, guest curator in one of their exhibit spaces. So do we have any uh, questions or discussions on this particular event? I had one question on this. Uh, city Pages, $1,500. I don't think City Pages is a market that we should be funding. So I'd like to take 1500 out of that. OK. Um, they had 1500 for City Pages. So I think then it's 6000 or yeah, 6500 Their Yeah, their request is for $8,000. So. Yep. And 1500 of that, as submitted, is City Pages. I agree. I think we've that's the same type of adver local ad sources that we've re subtracted from other requests in the past. Yeah. And we want to really um, we want to um, encourage advertising outside of the outside of our local market circle. Yep. So was that a motion to fund uh, at sixty yeah, five hundred? Uh, that would be a motion. <laughs> I'll second it if it is. All right. Okay. Uh, there's been a mo uh, motion by. Alwitzki is second by Rasmussen to uh, fund the uh, Center for Visual Arts at 6500 Any uh, discussion? The only discussion piece I have, 25 room nights for $6,500. Um, it's tight. It's tight. So hopefully it's, you know, I, I think reading through that, um, we have a great um, Hmong festival already, already in the area. Uh, we've got a Hmong, muse Hmong Heritage Museum. So hopefully it's another another piece that yep. gains traction and, and helps bring the CVA to um, the next level because I don't I don't know in the future 25, 25 lodging nights for sixty five hundred equals yeah. but right. I, I see uh, Tiffany Rodriguez Lee's in the room so why don't you come up and um, yeah <laughs> um, thank you for that um, I'm trying to be conservative with my estimation um, I do think it's important to note. Um, the continued need for city and tourism support for the arts, although we have Hmong American Center, who we are working with on this exhibit, um, and the wonderful museum already, I think it's important that we continue to see that backing from our local municipalities for weatherproof tourism activities, such as art galleries. So I was conservative on my 25. Um, hopefully we'll see more um, and continue to make the, the appropriate argument of the impact of events like this on local tourism and economy. So I just want to address my conservative estimation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank I, you. I, I think, you know, this is, you know, we, we, we're always looking for new and creative events, and this is certainly a, a creative event, and it's a, um, it's, it's the type of thing we haven't seen mm -hmm. here at the commission. So yeah. it's, um, that's something that, I, that, that really um, kind, of, kind of excites me. Mm -hmm. We are excited about new stuff. I mean, yeah. that's... And additionally on it, 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 it's not as finite, right? I mean, it has mm -hmm. a finite amount of time, but I mean, it's over the course of many months, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Which, so what's great is, you know, there's that potential for like stays over the time of the exhibit, which mm -hmm. we're familiar with doing. What I'm really excited about is its actual opening reception 
for having those 25 stays um, for that night of celebration, uh, which will include music and food and all that fun stuff. But you're right, it's got that like drawn out process. Mm, yeah. Very nice. Okay, thank Thanks. you. So there's a motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion? All right, uh, all those in favor of funding the uh, Center for Visual Arts at 6500, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, that carries, thank you. Um, next up is the, um, um, I guess it's uh, Among American Centers, uh, Among Wassa Festival. So they are asking for $20,000 for their event. So any uh, discussion on that? This I know this is a very popular one. It's been um, well received over the last four or five years. It's, it's yeah, happened. It, seem, so. it seems to continue to grow. Um, you know, and I think it's outreach in, in terms of cultural celebration is getting better and better. Um, they've added additional attractions and events within that same weekend um, to increase the appeal. And so, um, you know, when this first began, it started small, but it just seems like every year it gets incrementally better. Um, so I think this is one worth taking a chance on. I think it does bring a lot of people into the area uh, to celebrate, um, celebrate the culture. So I'd make a motion that we fully fund this one. Is, do we have anybody here from that? To re no. Uh, mm -mm. Uh, no, I don't believe everybody's nodding their head to snow. Okay. It, it is a huge event, mm -hmm. no doubt, and it's a wonderful, um, it is a great show showpiece, and I, I think my question surrounds every year it's it's funded, it's funded very heavily. Um, there are There is lodging driven through this, I don't think as much as the attendance would the ratio, but that's okay. Interested to see over time, are we gonna charge admission? Is this something that become self-sustaining? Um, I mean, it can continue to get bigger and bigger if nobody has to pay for it. So I, that would be my, my questions around it in the future, but it is a fantastic event, and um, you know, I think maybe the next cycle and the next request, that would be something that I'd be interested in. I just say that my question was, do we really need $20,000 to go to a, a standing event that has a dedicated audience, if you would? Um, they, they know what outlets they're going to give it. I didn't like that they didn't list out um, where, they, where this $20,000 was going. I felt like it was just, I'm going to throw $20,000 on here. I'm going to say this is where, do it, where, where it's going to go. And if, it, if I get 20, that's great. If I get 15, it's great. If I get 10, it's great. Like, I, that's what I felt like this application was a little lazy, um, honestly. But but it does do good. It has it brings people in, so it's a double edged sword. Yeah, I can I can attest 100%. to bring I can attest to bringing people in living in the district and my proximity to the uh, soccer fields. Um, cars park on my street, six <laughs> seven blocks away. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, Hickey? I, I, I did go last year and they had some uh, some talent come in from California. Mm -hmm. I knew that was new and uh, so. Well, and I think yeah. then there was a year or two before that they had added a fishing tournament the same weekend. They had added stuff for, you know, they have, in addition to the events that they were normally hosting at the event, they've added other things in parallel with that that people may enjoy when they're not at the event that have come for that. So, you know, I don't know if they still plan to have that this year, but, you know, I think they were experimenting with different things and you know, trying to widen the appeal to people who may not be interested in what they offered the first few times. So. Do we know what level we funded last time? Yeah, 10,000. It was probably 10,000. So 10, mm -hmm. so I think that was before the cap left though, right? Yes. I mean, weren't they, 10,000 was the max? Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can get a pretty decent ad buy for 20 somewhere, you know? I mean, even TV, so. Do you need a second for Lisa's motion? I'll second it. <laughs> did we have a motion? Already? I did. I moved okay, to yes. fully. Oh. I moved to fully fund it. I mean, obviously, every year we're going to continue to look at it with yeah. a critical eye, you know. But I think that it's fair to see how big they can make it. And you know, if we find that we need to maybe reduce next year, um, if it's starting to self-sustain, we could do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a motion by Rasmussen, second by Henke. Any other discussion? And. Yeah, that might be an important caveat that it's this this event is is going on about five years now, so mm -hmm. it, it should start looking at sustainability. Right, okay. and and weaning back on the on the ask. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, any other 
discussion. Otherwise, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? And that one carries. Good. Uh, okay, next up is uh, Liaki Woodson Art Museum. Their um, outrageous, outrageous ask, not outrageous, outrageous. <laughs> and uh, this appears to be, I guess, is it a combined effort between um, the um, outrageous entities, I believe? So. That's, I mean, between birds and art and the um, outrageous festival. Yeah. Usually, yeah, usually the museum didn't run the downtown event. No. But so. it looks like the one next to it also, I mean, happens the same weekend. Like, it's all kind of part of the same, right. you know, that, yeah. I think that Wasa Art Association is the true art in the park, too. So, yeah. you know, with the shuttle running between it all. I think Tiffany, you had something? Sorry. Okay. Okay, so this is so this is this is the typical this is the the, the yeah the traditional S we've we've received for outrageous mm -hmm. so I mean really that is and has been um, historically one of the best ones we have in terms of draw oh, yeah. um, you know and you know it feels like if they can increase that outreach because now it's become popular and word of mouth has spread hey Wasa has a great art festival. You know, when it was first starting, it was largely locally based. And so I think now once word got out, it really has gained some momentum, mm -hmm. you know, that entire weekend, assuming we have, even when the weather's bad, people are here. So, you know, I feel like that one is certainly worthy of, you know, the, the two that kind of walk hand in hand here are certainly worthy of funding. I'd um, move that, well, I guess if we want to take them separately. I would move to fund 10,000 for this first one. Okay. And um, on that, this I don't know what the discussion piece here is, but because uh, there's one for art in the park, right? Art in the park is a standalone ask for ten thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that one is juried. That I, I think the downtown one is too, but it's different organizers. It is. In in I have had feedback from our travelers and people close to me in that arena. It I would question whether or not we're trying to market to the same people. Are we combining forces? Are we, are we working together as a unit, and we're using twenty thousand dollars to bring people in for outrageous weekend, or are we giving Art in the Park ten grand to essentially market to the same audience, just mm -hmm. their section? It, it is confusing. If it, the end for the for the end user, it can be confusing, mm -hmm. and and I would I guess question a little bit if we're maximizing the buy in this sense because it's the same weekend. I, I agree. A commingled effort is certainly key there. I think because then you can cast a wider net, you know. And I I do think that um, they all are key to one another's success. There is there is a relationship between them all where um, the there's a lot of different art represented throughout those different exhibits and those different shows. I think that that outreach should extend to both artists and patrons. So, I mean, if that advertising outreach is to get people to the festival, it should also to be get to be getting more and more artists, you know. And the bigger it gets, the better. But I, I agree that a joint effort is certainly necessary, rather than multiple multiple targets on the same attendees. Do we have anybody here from Outrageous and or Art in the Park? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't know. But, okay. <laughs> um, I'll just I'll quickly clarify. I can't speak to Art in the Park, so WVAA's application, um, though I can speak to Art Rageous, and it is a combined marketing effort. And I can say that uh, WVAA Art in the Park is part of that conglomerate. So it's made up of the Center for Visual Arts, uh, the Festival of Arts, which is the downtown portion, Liaki Woodson Art Museum, and then Art in the Park. Um, so we all, I didn't know about WVA's application, so I'm not going to speak to that. Um, but I can speak to Outrageous. That is a combined effort between up here on 12th, downtown, and um, Marathon Park. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm assuming the 10000 probably comes from when we had caps on it. Would it benefit us if they all applied together? 
I, I don't know how feasible how feasible that is. Well, we've got we got two. Well, we got ten thousand for the one and ten thousand for the other, which yeah. really for the same weekend is twenty. Right. You know? and I mean, it, whether it's one app for twenty or two apps for ten, we're, we're still yeah, pouring in the I same mean, money. So, so this other one, the art rate, art, art art association one, when they have their expenses listed out as their budget, they have a brochure for three CVB advertising, which is, you know, visit Wassa. So I don't know if they're doing visit, like Wassa stuff or if Wassa's taking their money and then doing it. But really, they only have, in my opinion, they only have eight thousand. That's applicable via Facebook and Google advertising, and they need to target outside of ninety miles for that mm -hmm. and that's in my opinion so i think maybe 18 total is the maximum that i would be willing to do between the two of them yeah and that, that and again that that's where kind of my origin of the question was right. like you're gonna you're talking trying to talk to the same you're people it's same. confusing uh -huh. um you know and i'm i'm, I'm not here to Yeah, and with the, with the CVB, that's an ad that's placed in our visitor guide at a discount for a nonprofit, and it's distributed throughout the state to all the area CVBs and the uh, visitor centers on the interstates and the so well outside the area. Would it be, would we be in, I don't know how it works, I guess, in this day's case, but Art in the Park, it sounds like brochures are Kind of dedicated that 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 arm of that weekend, which is great. Um, and then the part that was going to go outside of 90 miles, can we reallocate that to the to the whole? Well, maybe. I mean, the the um, Valley Art Association's exhibit at uh, Marathon Park. When you think about art in the park, um, there's actually two shows happening there on the same day, sharing the same venue. So the stuff that you see that's happening in the exhibition building and down the wings of that is the Valley Art Association. The stuff that's happening in every other building, like the multi-purpose buildings and the um, you know, judging barns and whatnot, that actually is a festival called Art World that is organized by a private promoter who is a, they have this weird symbiotic relationship. When people attend the event, they don't know who's who, they just see art. But they're two very different organizations that are feeding off one another. The craft, the craft sale one has never applied here, but it gets an awful lot of mileage off of everything else happening in town that weekend. And then the Valley Art Association gains an awful lot of foot traffic from the people that are coming to all the bigger buildings to participate in that show. I only know that because you know, years ago I was in the art and craft business as a sideline and there were two very different cultures but they were there the same day, and the attendees couldn't tell one from the other. But the exhibitors knew, yeah. and so and they post it different. They market it different. Like they've got different banners up on the buildings. Yeah, and the, stuff. Art, the art world. Like you said it's a private entity, so they it would, is. they wouldn't be eligible for room tax. They're they're um, not, and they've not asked for any. No. But mm -hmm. you know they're they're all generating mileage together. Yeah. So you know it. I guess my my point is that it's it's possible that the Valley Art Association may actually need less because they're getting this draw from this other one that is widely popular. So, you know, I, and none of them are here to ask. So I right, do, I'll I do feel the 8,000 is appropriate there. So. Okay, so I think we're, we're, we're kind of, since these two are sort of similar, we're, we're sort of discussing them in tandem. So um, do we want to? Uh, uh, well, well, go ahead. If, if it's all right, let's. Start with the outrageous one, and I'll, yeah. sec I'll second the motion for ten thousand to the okay. outrageous. Okay. Yeah. So let, yeah. So let's let's clear that. Yeah. So let's clear the outrageous one, and then we can yeah. we can tweak the. Yeah. So motion. Who? Uh, Ra okay. Who's motion me? by Rasmussen and second by Henke, mm -hmm. uh, to fund the um, Liaki Woodson Art Museum's outrageous weekend for ten thousand. Uh, any discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And that one carries. And then uh, since we're on the same um, outrageous event, let's talk about the Wisconsin Art Association, uh, Wisconsin Valley Art Association at Marathon Park. And um, I think it's, um, they, their ask was $10,000. Do we wanna, I think right now we, we kind of whittle it down to eight. Do mm -hmm. we, um, are we comfortable with that or? 
Any other discussion? Or I'm, I'm comfortable with the eight because we could quantify the eight, and they're not here to defend the ten, no. right? So, um, you know, with that, I think it's appropriate to go with the eight. I, I'll make a motion to approve eight. Okay. Motion by Rasmussen. A second. Dis I'll second that. Second by Vandiak. Uh, discussion. Not hearing anything? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And that carries for eight thousand dollars. So. Uh, next up is the uh, Iron Bowl festivals, and um, this is a big one. Um, they're requesting twenty nine thousand four hundred ninety five dollars, spread over twelve events. Mm -hmm. So. That really seems to be picking up popularity and momentum, though. I mean, that really has. But from, I mean, remember when they first came to us and it was, you know, one event at Sylvan Hill, basically. So they really have expanded that. And I think they've expanded the um, appeal of that event, too. So, or those series of events. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, and there's a, a wide variety of events that you can, you can pick from. Yeah. So if you're not into one thing, that there, there's something, you know. There's something there for others, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I guess my, my, my question is, is, does the ask seem appropriate for the size? Well, I had a question on um, their 23 financials. Okay. It says promotion room tax reimbursed multiple times. I don't understand what that means. Is it just the... the so she the... she's submitting, instead of getting her funds up front, she submits for reimbursement. Okay. So, she, so she does it that yep. way. Gotcha. Yep. And then as she the accumulates them, she's submitting multiple requests. Okay. Was was last year the the first year they came to us for funds? Has it been a while? I think this is at least the third year. Third? I think okay. it's uh, yeah. I think it's the third as well. Because okay. they they started they they their first event I think was in twenty twenty during the pandemic. Yes. So I would um, had a chance to venture out to their website and headlining on that lodging page is banter. So um, I, whether it's paid placement or not, um, you know, that will, that will direct traffic. And, you know, ultimately we're talking about WASA room tax mm -hmm. here. So I don't, I don't know how that plays in there, but it definitely, um, that seems to be their primary lodging, direct, directing lodging to uh, for racers. So, and I saw last year we did 1500 and then when, this is a very long one. So, like in the ask, for example, it said music, five hundred dollars. Right, that. correct. <laughs> I mean, it was just a, the timer's hotel. I mean, yeah, but also we're paying like that's just out of counting. Um, and the radio ask was five hundred, and then like others were randomly print, asking six thousand three hundred and seventy-six dollars. Like I don't understand those numbers were odd to me, and they it doesn't seem to. Is there anybody here from Iron Bowl? I have rhyme or reason. So, in my opinion, I don't think we should give more than the 15 that we did last year because, well, first of all, they're not here to defend what they want, so they must not care an extremely amount for the uh, extra $14,000. And I, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like, I wish they would break their events out a little more uh, rather than just the one application so that we could see. Do we have the same detail. quantity of events last year? I don't know how many they, I guess I don't recall how many they submitted for. I mean, is, yeah. is 12 more than what we had before? That may substantiate part of the ask. They had a tear sheet in here. Um, 2024 events, I, don't, I, I thought one of them said new, but I guess not. So, yeah, they've Rib Mountain Adventure Challenge, Solstice Summit, Essential Gravel Bike, uh, TTT Gravel Bike, Underdown, uh, Midwest bike packing, ultra trail, and the red granite grinder. Um, well, and I think the question we've asked before with some of these is, if we fund it more, do we get more? more? Like, do they make it bigger and better? Because you know we're not interested in funding more of, like, stagnancy. Mm -hmm. But we've all, always wondered about some of these events that were growing. Like, if we fund it better, even than what some of them have asked for in the past, like, do they just do it bigger? And does it get larger faster? You know, and I think in the past we have even inflated a couple of awards to make that happen. 
you know, I, I could see that with this if the draw is there, just because of the diversity of the events and, and the appeal. Yeah, that's a great question that I don't know right. if, if there is if there would if you know, are you at capacity on some of your events and you're looking to sustain and, and enhance mm -hmm. or, you know, one more person's one more opportunity to be introduced to our community and potentially right. spend a night. Right. Those are and whether it's spectators questions. or competitors. I mean, that that outreach, we want it in both directions. Mm -hmm. Maybe Tim has ideas. Tim, come up, well, come up to the mic if you yeah, can. so we can hear you. Hello, everyone. Um, I do, cannot definitively speak for Iron Bull, but I can tell you what I know about uh, last year's events uh, were maxed out, um, which is great, and they're looking to expand their events, looking at uh, different dates for certain events. Uh, they're also going to be expanding the family uh, oriented type event, like they have a kids' run that's a part of you know one event. And they want to do more of that as well. So there are, I can definitively, you know, last I heard, uh, say that they're expanding in that as well because they see the, the value in that, and and the general value of opening up, um, going from a core group of hardcore racers to the other outside edges of people that might, would want to do it, maybe not as hardcore. So. That's that's well, and I, I think diversifying the age mix is helpful because if you have something for multiple family members that are far apart in age, then the appeal is just different. So, I agree with that. I also think, uh, to Lindsay's point, if you're asking for twice and we don't have, we're, we don't have we're, we're going on assumptions a little okay. bit, and and I think that, you know, I I think that last year they're they're showing success and progress, and. Um, yeah, I, I guess I have, I have questions that are still unanswered to, to get to that $30,000 request. The good part about this one is if it is a reimbursement, we can see where it went and what the use was. And so, you know, if we would take a chance on it and not get the return that we expected, then obviously not again. You well, know? When is there, when's our next meeting? Because they have right. 12 events in this, that's right? Yeah. I mean, that's the other thing. We give them 15 now, and if right. they come back later and show us yep. the other half of the events, right. I'm fine with that, right? I mean, yep. they 100%. just didn't show up today, so I can't give, I don't want to give them the 29, whatever they requested. I, yeah, I always thought it, that was high. I was, I was comfortable with 20, but um, 15 is good with me. Um, well, if we start with 15, yeah. they could certainly apply for the fall cycle or yeah. summer cycle if we have a, you know, another application well, we'll, window. I'm, I'm sure we'll have another meeting probably in July. To, yeah. To yeah. To and the then, fall yeah. events. And then just to follow back with the banter, I know when they went to short-term stays, I, I know all part of that room tax was considered where, right? Where it's actually, they're paying room tax also. So, I absolutely, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So, um, so Rothschilds pay the most is what Tim's saying. What's that? He said so Rothschilds had uh, given the most for their room tax is what yeah. he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I mean, things. you're advertising Rothschild. And we're not in contract. <laughs> Correct. So that's yeah. I mean that's yeah. another conversation, but yeah. it, it it does play a little bit yeah. of a role. It, it does. It sure does. So. I mean, it's it's fair though to go with 15 and then see what comes if it's a subsequent application. Then, you know, if someone's here to explain, it's more helpful. Yep. Yeah, I look, and I would look forward to that. You know, hopefully, it's really exciting and continue to build on the success right. that they I have. I have nothing against Aaron Bull. They just didn't show up for my questions. So I think what we did in the past is fine. So that's my motion, 15,000. I'll second that. Okay. Uh, motion has been made and second to um, the. Uh, uh, Grant the Iron Bull Festival to fifteen thousand dollars with the provisio that they can they can reapply for additional for their fall events. Uh, any other discussion? Not hearing anything. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And that carries. All right. Uh, next up, uh, the Wassa Pride. And um, I think this. I don't know if we've we've funded them in the past. This might be a new ask. Yeah, we did. So, yeah. last, we did last year. Okay. Yeah. okay. And they're looking for sixty-five hundred dollars. So, um, and that's a combination of marketing and um, or advertising and also marketing expenses. So. Looking at looking at the ask, creative of fifty-two hundred is yeah. spongy for me. Um, it's not tangible, um, and it's not defined. 
And there is a space in, in our marketing worlds of for creative, and that's an important piece. But I don't know what that is in this application. Well, that's true, because once you create the marketing piece, you still have to have funds to roll it out with. And I'd be more comfortable if the ask was for the rollout, not the creation. So, and, and I thought we, I'm sorry, we did Lisa. do the creation last year. I thought right. we funded. I thought we. I thought we yep. seeded that last year. We, we did. Yep. And so, we're we're why creative twice? I guess that's you're right on that. So, is anybody here from the uh, Wasa Pride? <coughs> transitioned so I didn't write the application but I have it in front of me okay. I do also have the data in front of me that's in the packet about the um, huge generation of stays and folks from outside of a 90 mile radius for this event um, I think that perhaps the creative was maybe misinterpreted in the application um, Again, this was written before I took over as chair. Um, but what I can say is that the 5200 could absolutely be used strictly for advertising in those markets that we've pulled out, like Milwaukee, um, Polk City, Iowa, um, Sheboygan. There's a couple other places on the <clears throat> data here um, that I think would be used really, really well and was what I was hoping for in coming to this meeting. Um, I apologize for the... We're in a transition phase. Um, however, however, uh, we have booked some incredible nationally acclaimed talent. Um, I expect us to see huge visitation from the event this year. And um, yeah. Well, I think that's important because this is an event that started small and it's getting incrementally larger every year. Um, I think that if the outreach and the, the mileage for the outreach is there, um, you know, I, cer I certainly could see 6,500. It's actually one of the smaller requests, you know, and if we can get that event to grow um, and generate more of those visits to our area, I think that's helpful. I'm also willing to say we could shift and adjust our budget to ensure that the ask is used strictly for that advertising and not for the creative assets, though I would like more creative assets, we can always reach out to sponsors for that. Um, mm -hmm. I really think it's important that we're able to advertise heavily. Uh, we have booked um, we have booked entertainment uh, from someone who is on national television currently and is in the top three of a very well-known um, drag show. Uh, the finale is on Friday, and we expect ticket sales to go insane after the weekend because she might be the winner um, of a national drag contest. Um, we have booked uh, the Expo Center because we expect to go above and beyond what can fit in any sort of venue downtown, uh, though we'd love to keep it downtown and we still have the downtown portion. Um, I, yeah, yeah, we do have, uh, we did get a sponsor uh, to provide a bus to go from downtown to the Expo Center so that people have a safe ride between the events. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so I would be really humbled to be able to take that and put that toward marketing, um, not just the huge talent and the, the headliner, but we have local talent participating as well. But that's the piece in getting folks from outside that 90 mile radius. Mm -hmm. um, we're also the first Pride Month event in the state. Um, and we have booked the same performer that a very popular and well-known venue in Milwaukee has booked later in the month. And so we're really that first chance, that first opportunity for the entire month of June um, I think it's going to be really popular. I, I think, you know, the 6,500, you know, um, advertise, you know, just for advertising, the 6,500 is, is wholly is a credible ask. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that if you could, yeah, if you could just like, you know, shift around your, your budget a little bit and, and commit it towards. Yeah, spend, if I need to I, provide I, anything to you, Marianne, yeah. I'm happy to make those shifts. I'm sorry. I took over like a week and a half ago. I think that's important because really um, visits and overnight stays is what is, is a driving force for us. So if we know that that commitment's there, I feel pretty good about the 6,500. Yeah. I'll move that we approve the 6,500 with that caveat that it be used for outreach. Absolutely. I'll second that. Okay. Motion's been uh, motion by Rasmussen, second by Vandiak. 
for 6500 um, committed towards advertising spend. Any other discussion? All right. Not hearing anything. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up. Uh, Monk Gardens Blossom of Lights. So, uh, we've kind of jumped around here, and I don't know if I can find the application <laughs> on my <laughs> I know, I screen. Sifting I'm, through pages. Yeah. There's, there's 353 this pages is, of right? applications this, here, so just excuse me for a second. This particular event, actually, this facility is in my... In my uh, representative area and I will say that I think I think its first one was this last fall um, extremely popular like it very very well received and the monk garden in general in terms of its offerings as it has started to um, offer things like you know cooking classes and the preschool and all these different things that were in addition to and even beyond mr. monk's vision for the facility that place is becoming more of a destination with everything that it adds and I think it's got a really, a really good appeal. Um, so, you know, they, they do need a, to cast a wide net for outreach, though, in terms of awareness. Um, you know, it's, it's a definitely a fan favorite for the locals. I know that there's a visitor element. I don't know that it's enough of a visitor element, but this event, certainly if they could undertake the outreach um, and bring those folks in, um, there's, there's benefit to be had by funding some different advertising for them at least on a larger scale. Yeah, I would agree. And I, I thought a nice thing with the application, too, is that they're going to um, do a joint effort with the uh, uh, Granite Peak Yeah. so that they can draw on people coming here mm -hmm. to ride the uh, the chairlifts and see the colors Yep. and then uh, participate in as the... A, in, as a day-night type activity, yeah, yes. Yeah, which was really... I, I thought that was, that, was, that was a really a nice combination. So. Yep. It does boost the overnight idea mm -hmm. that people would be in town long enough to be here after dark and, and enjoy that daytime, nighttime activity. So, there, does it, it, I'm interested in how they're selecting their hotels. Anybody here from yes. Monk? Oh, yes. yes. I'm Linda Schill, uh, the development manager. I'm sorry Darcy couldn't join you tonight. So I think it's been outreach on Darcy's part. I know she's pursuing seven hotels just in the Wausau area. Uh, also, though, in Rothschild, Weston, um, Cronenwetter, uh, Rib Mountain, Rib Mountain, thank you. Um, so building that out because we are hopeful then that, you know, as you're coming in late night to see the lights, uh, that then there's a stay component. Um, three new things this year, I would say, I'll just add, and if you want me, I, I don't have much else to expand more on how we're choosing hotels. It's if they're willing to partner with us. Um, I know we worked with Steward Inn of Wausau. They've expressed interest now and will um, join as a partner as well this year too. So I think it's just, this, is, this will be our third year of the event actually, and it is gaining traction. Weather was not on our side last year, so numbers were um, probably the same as our first year, but um, with three new things uh, actually the application states that will start September 25th we're actually starting the week prior so we're extending it to six weeks this year rather than four and we are extending it Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday rather than just Thursday through Saturday so I believe last year we had 18 event nights this year we'll have 24 so that should certainly help uh, boost attendance and then also the partnership um, that we're pursuing with Granite Peak so that we can package Blossom of Lights with a Fall Colors chairlift ride. So we think that would help. Mm -hmm. And um, lastly, we're gonna offer, I believe it'll be on Wednesday nights, where it'll be a reduced ticket rate to, since that's somewhat known as like family night um, for many young families so that we can get groups of, of families in too for attendance on a Wednesday night. So doesn't exactly speak to your hotel question, but doing I mean, a lot to expand on and our reach, um, you know, Wasa and beyond to, to some of these other municipalities. Yeah, and that the, on the application, it had the, the, the current hotel partners and then the forecasted ones. And there's, sure. there, was, there was just a lot of outside of Wasa. Mm -hmm. And uh, and those pro not listed on here being just a Wasa application. So we do have, you know, the others in... Um, uh, Oh, is it not Cedar Creek? Um, forgive me, but yeah, we are looking at in, in the other too. For yes, sure. yes, yeah. Weston Rib Mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I, 
yeah, that that, was, that answers that question. I have a I have a different question for the committee, but sure. the commission that's loosely related. Sure. Two thousand hotel nights is that your question? Because that's my question. That's a lot of hotel nights. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's I think we need to realistically though, put so, hotel yeah. nights down. Yeah. It, yeah. If that how how is that validated? Right. How are you sure. track and. So I was um, just looking through um, Darcy's estimations here on the application where I believe the information coming from Tim, we say the economic impact last year was over $400,000 to the area. Number of local attendees really just falling below 600 people of the uh, 5,400 people that we saw um, attending. So there were 95 zip codes represented in attendance and we were able to track that through Eventbrite and then also post attendee surveys as to how they heard about us, where they were traveling from. Um, so non-local, uh, we uh, overnight, we estimated 2,944, meaning they came to us at night to see the show and they weren't in our local zip code. And then non-local day visitors, 1,058. So estimated anyone coming from 90 miles or more is considered an overnight visitor. So mm -hmm. I understand a stretch, but I think a little, it's difficult for us to put an exact number on overnight stays related. But I think hopefully with the partnership with Granite Peak, we can, we can more confidently say that yes, they're coming in and coming in earlier in the day, staying overnight. So I don't know if you and, have and anything know, to share. Yeah, we know that a lot, uh, a good chunk of overnight visitors will stay in places other than the hotel. Too. So there is that. We just, you know, we're uh, working on tracking uh, bookings. Uh, this uh, end of spring, we're adding a direct booking tool to our website. So we'll know how many people gone to, going to an event page and will book and we'll We'll know a lot more data sets that will say that direct line to bookings. So. Do we, we capture lodging metrics on Airbnb? Yes, we do. Okay. I don't know if anyone went out to our event website, but we do have a special event website for Blossom of Lights, and we do have a hotel page. And um, those that are offering a discount for visitors to Blossom, there's a direct link right on that page too. So hopefully we should be able to do some tracking mm -hmm. with that this year as well, and a special discount code too, so. Okay. Yeah, and I th I th thank you, I don't mm -hmm. have any other questions for you. For, for the commission, um, I could, being in the hotel industry, uh, sitting on the board of the CVB, what what jumps off for me is the amount of Rothschild hotels, and they're not part of the CVB. And this commission has allocated almost four hundred thousand dollars to the CVB to market our region, and to be able to coattail that and maximize our investment. I'm not saying that we we shun our punish um, the organizations. Potentially, as a consideration, um, you know, our our allocation to the CVB to, to to represent our region, and there's a community that's not funding that um, effort, and then being able to pick and choose a little bit more henpeck uh, different events to take lodging down to their area, which will generate and their their room tax coffers. I don't know where that fits in our conversation. Well, um, yeah. I mean, they are obviously gaining room tax dollars off of all of our efforts. <laughs> correct. Including our um, partners who are getting the funds. So, so again, it's, it, you don't want to punish the organizations, but I think that at some point we got to, we have to acknowledge that and it's going to put us at a competitive disadvantage as a, as a municipality mm -hmm. and as a commission in due diligence with our funds. In general terms, I think it would behoove our recipients to um, partner with our hotels, um, either either in in addition or first, you know, and and get those dollars channeled to our area. I mean, it's certainly not a problem if someone wants to stay in a neighboring community. Absolutely. Um, but I think that Wasa has um, a variety of very nice places to stay now. I mean, there was a time where we were a little bit underbuilt on some of that stuff in terms of quality, but it's there now. So, you know, I certainly would like to see those recipients. Um, work to partner with local facilities and work as hard on that as they have with um, the Rothschild and and even you know other areas. So yeah. yeah, I don't know. You know, when when people shop for room nights, if they're looking, you know, proximity. You know, would the Wasa hotels go first because it's closest to the event, or mm -hmm. if they're going to be um, 
or, or if they're if you're shopping on price, it's well that and, and if they're looking for a certain chain, or a certain I mean you chain just you don't to. you don't know, but yeah, you know we have some pretty nice ones in our area now that are you know na nationally nationally franchised. Be, so come on up. Yeah, and I, you know the other thing about that too that again is mystifying to us is that you know they really don't want to be in contract with us, but they're more than willing to give these events uh, grant monies to, to help support these events. So I, I feel like it does kind of showcase what their, you know, intent is. And like you said, piggyback right. on right. stuff. There, so. There's definitely some free mileage happening there. Yeah. <laughs> With, and it, so like it, it does, it's a segue. That's the, that's the off conversation. Um, it, it, having it be able to educate myself a little bit more on the event um i think it is very unique i think it is a super cool event mm -hmm. and and i you know i wish the weather wouldn't have you know rained on our parade quite literally um or snowed on it and you know i, I moved to fund fund the grant request i'll second that okay so a motion has been made by vandiac seconded by rasmussen to fund this monk gardens blossoms a light at the ten thousand dollar level any discussion and um, yeah, I, I think just to piggyback on, on, on what you said there, um, it is a unique event. And you know, with that time frame being in the late September and October, it kind of fits into that shoulder season that we're looking for the events that aren't, that don't happen, you know, when the ski resorts open or when it's summertime. So yeah. it's um, def definitely, it's. Fills the gap. It does, it yeah, fills the gap. gap. Especially yep. that Wednesday and Thursday. For sure. So it is prime wedding season, and mo a lot of hotels will be full on Saturday. But that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, there's a lot of opportunity to be had there. So thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That carries. Okay. we got two left. Uh, Wassa area events. Um, I guess this is a good order because, we'll, yeah, we'll work through the Blues Fest, and then we'll save the fireworks for last. So... Uh, Wasa Area Events, Blues Fest. And I see, um, see if I can get to my... This is a, um, a $10,000 ask. It's one that's traditionally been uh, requested yeah. by the um, uh, Wasa Events. So, I see. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, I'm Allie. I'm the executive director for Wasa Events. Um, so last year we asked for $13,000. We initially asked for ten, and then we came back to the commission to ask for another three. Um, Blues Fest had a record-breaking year last year in ticket sales, um, which, honest to be totally honest, shocked a lot of us, even on our board, um, myself included. So we had a great year last year. Granted, we did have great weather. Um, but a lot of that additional marketing and the additional pushes that we did, specifically with the OTT through the uh, TV stations and those markets, extremely helped that event. Um, so that was really cool to see all those ticket sales come in the last couple weeks. Um, so major thank you, I mean, to the commission for that because it wouldn't have been possible without that extra additional funding. Um, so this upcoming year, we do have a partnership with Channel 7 um that is a sponsorship so a lot of that stuff that we have used marketing dollars for in the past so that additional three for instance um is something that we will not be paying for this year um and so that's why our ask is back down to 10 uh specifically for blues fest well, and i think it's good to see that progression because as the event becomes more self-sustaining and successful mm -hmm. on its own from other sources that's kind mm -hmm. of what we want to see happen yeah but it still does bring in some great tourism and I will say for that one, we do have blocks for our bands, both at Wassa and Weston Hotels, secured that Wassa Events pays for. So, Good deal. I'll move to fund that one at 10000 Okay. I'll second. second. Okay, motion by Rasmussen, a second by uh, Vandiac to fund uh, Wassa Events uh, Blues Fest for $10,000. Any discussion? Uh, hearing anything, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that carries. And then um, let's segue right into the fireworks festival. Yeah. So, uh, so ten thousand dollar ask. So Alessandra, if you want yeah, to go ahead with that. Absolutely. Um, so we were approached last year by the mayor's office, um, as you all know. Uh, the mayor's office put on the Fourth of July fireworks last year. People were not allowed inside to the airport, so there were a lot of concerns over where to go to watch the fireworks, where can they be viewed from, all those sorts of questions. Um, so two weeks before the 4th of July, we have Wings Over Wassa, as you know, at the airport. 
Um, we're planning to leave the entire fencing that is created inside of the airport as a crowd safety barrier, um, so to speak. So for the 4th of July, we'll be opening up the airport gates. There will not be any festival items per se, so no beer tent, things like that. Um, we'll have your basic event necessities, so toilets, trash cans, but basically just letting the public in for a free event to view the 4th of July fireworks. Um, for those of you that don't go out of town or for those people that don't travel, um, just giving everybody an opportunity to get together. Um, and that funding specifically is the request that the mayor's office received from the city last year. Um, so now that we're the ones hosting that event, this is where we were told to make that request. So I think a little bit of history here. Traditionally, the fireworks have been provided by the Owasa JCs. That, uh, that organization has folded. Um, and I think, yeah, last year the fireworks was a direct grant from the, mm -hmm. the mayor's budget. There's so. been actually, um, you know, we for years we're trying to get that entity to move that event out of Marathon Park because the weather and mm -hmm. the wind was so bad. And you'd have it so... You know, people would sit there all evening and then find out after having sat there all evening that it was too windy and it wasn't going to go, and it was just a, an angry explosion. So um, that said, taking that down to the airport, I think we found out with the original Balloon Fest that when you do the fireworks on a larger scale and a larger show next to the lake, mm. you have a lot less problems. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so it's much easier for that event to take flight. And it was really well attended last year, even without allowing people mm -hmm. to make entry into the airport. People complained about it, but they yep. still came. Correct. I think letting them into the airport makes sense because I think they've all thought they were getting in in the first place. And then when they couldn't, there was like, you know, consternation. But I think that event could only get better if they let them in the, mm -hmm. in the grounds. So, you know, and I, I think there isn't, there isn't another, there used to be an alternative. Like they used to host a 4th of July, a parallel 4th of July celebration at Athletic Park. I don't know that that's even happening anymore. So there's not a whole lot in the community to, you know, celebrate that type of an event. So, and I will say too, this is one that we're working on. It's still being a joint partnership between the other, like between other municipalities as well. Um, Festival Foods has been extremely generous and gave us money to specifically go towards the fireworks portion of this event. Um, and then we were able to get an agreement with them to bring in our own fireworks team who has done fireworks with WASA events for numerous years, um, whether through Balloon Rally or Wings Over WASA. Um, so it's our team. They're known. They're trusted. They know the entire airport. Um, and we are planning to shoot larger shells than last year, so that's been part of our discussion as well. Um, and it is an event that we're looking to grow in the future. It's just with our current event season and events that we already have, we're just keeping this one extremely simple. Where, what's, the, what's the dollar amount in the ask? 10. Uh, 10, 10 for this 10, one. But, uh, there's only 1,500 in, in ad buys. Correct. So, yeah, so, so I, this, I'm not sure that this is the right spot for it. Right? I mean, like, shouldn't it come out of the city's portion of room tax? Maybe right? we, we could give us any clarification yeah, on that. Yeah, we could do that. You know, finance is next week, Tuesday. So if you really felt like this was the wrong place I, for it, I, we could yeah. move it over to. Well, that or we could fund the 15. We could fund the 15. Fund the 15 and, and make a secondary ask for the to remainder the, from yeah. the other source. Okay. You know, I we mean, because I think WASA Events is a appropriations entity anyway, right? Yep. Under there? Yes. So, yeah, so I think, I guess I'd make a motion to fund the 1500 that we can quantify that we know is an ad buy from here, and then they can make a secondary request to the other source. Yeah, and you don't have to fill out a different application. Sure. We can just okay. move it on to the agenda. What And what night of the week is this on Saturday? It's a Thursday. So Thursday. then our rain backup plan is the Friday the 5th. Okay. So, okay. Yeah, that was my, my big my big concern with this event was that we were since we're we're limited to spending money on on marketing and advertising mm -hmm. that. Yeah, the other seventy five hundred would be much easily much easier to substantiate in the realm of appropriations in the finance committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. So. Uh, Lisa, is that a motion? Then? It is fifteen hundred for them. Fifteen uh, motion by uh, Rasmussen for fifteen hundred. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Vandia. Any other discussion? All right. Not hearing anything. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. And that carries. Cool. All right. And I believe that is the end of our agenda. Yes. So. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Do we have to set new business topics for the following oh, agenda? Can. Sure. I would like to. I would like to add that the Rothschild piece. 
on there for discussion. Mm -hmm. I think it's I think it's become a big enough talking point in our community, and there's large enough dollars that it, we're we're floating around now that I think that we've circled back to that conversation. Yes, I think we should talk about that, and I think it would be helpful to know like where we are at in terms of getting them to contractually participate like the others all are. You know, because at one point they were working with Mosini and intentionally not within our group. So, I mean, if any of that... That has not changed. I was going to say, if any of that is softening, it would help this process. Mm -hmm. So, but it would be good discussion to have for next time for sure. Yeah. So is that like a marketing... Sorry. Is that like a marketing um, what we expect from what we get? Like, if we give more than Rothschild, we should be higher. Our hotel should be more visible. Is I think what you're, from what you're asking for, yeah, I, I yeah, think, not, right? not to, I mean, you know, not to get into any kind of discussion. Because they still can do it. Not, yeah, not to get into any kind of discussion, but I, I think that's probably the gist of what you were looking at. I think so. it's. I think how does it impact the qualification of the request to this to this commission, and does it impact the amount that we're willing to fund, whether it's a percentage or anything like that? Mm -hmm. Do you have hotels listed on your website, and if so, are Wasana's listed? First, second, yeah. or third, right? Yeah. I mean, like, that's... Well, that's yep. the thing. I mean, for pop-up visibility... Or is it visibility, alphabetical? Can... Because alphabetical is alphabetical. Right. right. I mean, and for <laughs> pop-up visibility, you can buy your way up to the front with that kind of stuff. So, you know, are ours coming up first, or are the others coming up first? Mm -hmm. so. so, And and there's... And part of, and it could parlay itself, or that could, you know, segue into our follow-up request and information. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, if everybody's commingled and there's a, a larger percentage there, then maybe that is what... The second, the, we have a lot of perennial events. I mean, there's a lot of different ways we can go, but I think it comes down to allocation and qualification. Mm -hmm. I right. think we, I think, we, I think we get the idea for an agenda topic. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so uh, motion by Lewitsky, second by Vandia. Yes, sir. Uh, no, uh, no discussion. So, all those in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.